Hi, everybody. This is David Sarita from davidsarita.co. And today I'm going to talk about how to use a magnetic field tester meter. And this is one of the better ones out there. You can get these at trifield.com. It measures magnetic, electric, and radio frequencies is in the red. And a lot of people don't know what they're doing when they're, when they're using these meters. And so that's why I'm going to do this. Um, with pulsed electromagnetic field devices, the first thing to understand is brain waves are pulsed. The human heart has a pulse. And it's a magnetic field pulse that comes off the heart and the brain. And therefore, to understand that we carry iron and trace minerals in our blood and that all metals are actually magnetic. They're either um, ferromagnetic means um, a metal like iron, which, is, which has a very integral role in, in human blood and carrying hemoglobin oxygen to the brain and, and the whole body. Iron can be permanently magnetized, which means the, the, the polarity fields at the atomic level which are normally scattered, line up to your north-south position and give you a, a kind of permanent magnet. And all the rare earths can do that, which like neodymium. But even copper, which is in my coil, is, is diamagnetic, which means when you have a living pulsed magnetic field going through the copper in these coils, it actually creates a repulsive kind of protective shield if you will, it pushes things away. And then the aluminum is 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 paramagnetic instead of like to the magnetic. And so it, you can try this. Like if you take a good magnet like this and get a good chunk of silver, like a silver coin, and push the magnet really fast towards the silver coin, and you will feel the 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 grip of the of the magnet on the silver but when the when the magnet is not moving you won't feel anything but yet if i take a magnet and i want to pick up a, a, attach it to a piece of metal like this screwdriver it sticks to it that's because it's iron right which is rare earth but i can't pick up a piece of aluminum with this but if i move it really fast over a piece of aluminum i can move the aluminum so when you think of your blood, which is full of iron and trace minerals, <clears throat> all the trace minerals, copper, zinc, everything is magnetic. It's either paramagnetic, diamagnetic, anti-ferromagnetic, or, fer or, or, or uh, ferromagnetic. So you, you've got about four major types of magnetism. And there's nothing that is not magnetic. So that means when you look at um, pulse electromagnetic field devices, um, many of the beds that are out there, I've tested with this meter. And I'm going to show you how, you how you really use one of these meters and what it actually means. Because a lot of people turn it on and they see the numbers jumping around. They go, oh, my God, that must be an unhealthy magnetic field. And so they, they don't really know what they're doing. And, and so when... When I took my meter, I've tested the, the top brands of therapeutic um, PMF beds out there. And my beds are at least three times stronger in the magnetic field. In fact, I can measure the magnetic field three times further away as well. But in addition to that, when you understand that a lot of these beds are using tiny little coils that um, basically when they, the, the, elect, the, the magnetic field, when it go, let's just say this rod is a copper wire. And when, when the electric current is being carried by the, the, electro, the electron force in, in the copper, the magnetic field appears 90 degrees to the wire. So this is 90 degrees to the wire. So that means there's a magnetic field all the way around the wire like this, right? And it extends technically almost infinitely into space at the speed of light when it's pulsed, like when it's moving, right? So that means 
that the shape, if I'm lying on coils like mine, which are 14 pointed star coils, the field is actually like a donut with 14 nodes and it spins at three quarters of the speed of light. And so when you have a spinning vortex and you're lying on it, all the iron in your blood and all the trace minerals are going to start circulating and moving the fluid around. And that's called increasing circulation. And so if, if, if you have just tiny, tiny little coils like this, and there's tons of them in, in a mat, then you're only going to be moving energy in a tiny radius. Whereas if I want to circulate energy through the entire, you know, endocrine system and circulatory system and all the lymphatics, I need bigger coils like mine. So, so that's why my systems are actually the best systems out there. It's just that most people don't know how things work. So if you understand how things work, you can understand why it works. Because the iron and the trace minerals in your blood have no choice but to respond to the magnetic field and start moving and therefore carry the fluid of the blood and get everything moving. And, and heart disease is the number one killer in the world, right? Yeah, to, to George Shields is writing about the beds. The beds are on my website. Just go to davidserita.co and look at, go to the Vortex beds. But that's, so I'm just giving you a little bit about, like, pulsed electromagnetic field therapy is, is there's, again, a lot of devices out there. People get so confused. And that's why I want you to get one of these. You go to trifield.com. This is a good meter. And every meter has a frequency range of sensitivity. So if you turn this on first to magnetic mode, right here, magnetic, right? And you can see I've only got 0 0.23 milligauss and a little bit of activity on my bar, right? So what does that mean? Well, a milligauss is one thousandth of a gauss. And a Tesla is 10,000 Gauss, one Tesla. And so if you go into an MRI machine or a CAT scan, you could be exposed anywhere between two and as high as six Tesla, which is massive. Now, you have to understand the, the, the scientist Nikola Tesla lived to be 87 years old, and he exposed his body to very high-frequency, high-voltage fields all the time, never got cancer, lived a completely full life, and many people uh, feel that he was actually assassinated and he would have lived even longer than 87. And, and I think that's probably definitely true based on me being a former director of the Tesla Foundation in Los Angeles and being appointed by an MIT PhD physicist. And I showed the documentation of that uh, a few episodes ago. So what it means is, okay, so you've got wiring in your house and the walls and if you live in europe you've got 220 volts right is what is going through the walls and, and if you live in north america you've got 115 to 120 volts now volts times amps and amps is current equals watts and watts are energy consumed right so Voltage, the best way to describe voltage is is, poten is what's called potential current. But without voltage, you don't get any current. It's like two kids are sitting on a teeter-totter, and the teeter-totter is perfectly even. But if I tilt the teeter-totter slightly, and I put a bowling ball here, a metal ball, it'll roll at a certain speed. The, the greater the difference between here and here, the faster the ball rolls. That's voltage. And another example of voltage is, let's say it's a hot day and there's no wind. And as soon as I have a cloud, which cools the air underneath it, you have temperature difference. And through that differential, suddenly the wind starts blowing, right? So, um, so that between hot and cold. And that means because you, had diff you have a differential, you have movement of energy. Movement of energy is key and understanding how to get your system going, right? So what is what is missing in a lot of understanding of why 
pulsed. I mean, I've read good medical studies of, of pulsed electromagnetic therapy devices done at the university level that prove medically the benefits. But yet the mainstream medical community says you cannot say, and if anybody's trying to sell you a device, doesn't matter what it is, whether they have TV sets or they have a little coil this big, you cannot say it cures cancer or you can be sued for medical malpractice. Anybody is telling you that, which is why we don't have that anywhere on our website, even though they have done medical studies that actually prove there's a benefit. And I explained to you how it works because you have iron in your blood and trace minerals. And if you have a circulating coil behind your back and you're lying on it and you're pulsing harmonic frequencies, it's going to cause all the iron to start moving. It has no choice because that's how magnetic fields, um, how, how minerals respond to magnetic fields. And it doesn't matter whether there's trace <laughs> copper in your body because I can take this copper and I can take my magnet. And if I move the magnet really fast across the copper, I can feel the copper start to pull. But if my magnet's not moving, I can't feel anything on the copper. All right, so you have copper in your blood. You have zinc, which is a metal. You have iron, which is ferromagnetic. And so it will all start increasing the circulation. If you can inc increase circulation, you can theoretically, theoretically, with caution, medically, understand why these things are so beneficial but again my coils are at least three times stronger than the top and the best selling other beds out there they're handmade and, and i also add gems and and magnets to my to my beds which gives you the sensation of real physical vibrations that it's, they tend to put people to sleep actually people um People um, um, really need to sleep, it seems. And I, I've had people, you know, lie in my beds right in front of me and they pass out for four hours right in front of me. And that, that's not, I'm not kidding. Four hours, they're just gone. They're so stressed out and they, they finally relax and they go into a deep um, healing state. So let's, let's go into the meter now because a lot of people turn these on and you go to magnetic mode and standard. And then you see, okay, that's 0 0.2 milligauss, right? That's background in my house, which is extremely low. So let's say your house wasn't properly electrically grounded. You might see four to six full milligauss and get really concerned, right? But four milligauss, remember, a, a milligauss is one thousandth, so one over a thousand gauss. And a Tesla is 10,000 gauss. And so what is a safe level would be, you know, people like to see zero. Actually, you don't see zero anywhere in the United States at, or Canada or anywhere in the world. Because the if you go on the U.S. Ge Geological Survey and you look at the magnetic field anomalies all over the Earth, there are different pockets on the ground have stronger magnetism than others which is natural earth magnetism. It is not uniform anywhere on the planet. Like I was looking at um, a magnetic um, survey map of, of, um, of uh, Utah and looking for anomalies and, and there's hot spots and low spots, but those deviations are so tiny. They measure them in micro Tesla. A micro Tesla, micro means millions. So one over a million Tesla. And they so they deviate the natural deviations on the earth are incredibly weak, but they do affect us, right? Because everything, like I said, every element on the periodic table is magnetic. No matter what, it's either diamagnetic, paramagnetic, ferromagnetic, antiferromagnetic. So everything responds to a magnetic field. So the question is, when should you be alarmed, right? Well, your internet and your cell phones are in the red part of this meter, which is the RF section, right? And if I move this close to my computer, it starts to go up just a little bit. This is measuring watts per meter squared. Remember, volts times amps, watts. 
And so it wants to see how much energy exists in your space in, in a square meter. And, and this meter here is much better. And this meter can see watts per meter squared, and it can see the X, Y, and the Z, which are your spatial dimensions, height, width, and breadth. And I can check the, the field strength there. So I see a lot of people posting videos online and saying, look, you know, I my meter is going up. This is not good. I don't want to see any, any activity at all. We are magnetic beings. Our sun has a magnetic field. Our earth has a magnetic field. We're, we're living systems, so we all have magnetic fields. But if you put this in magnetic mode standard and you walk around the house and you see six milligauss in the middle of the house, see, this isn't reading your cell phone or the Internet. This is reading most likely the wiring in the walls of your house. So if I bring this up to a light up here, I don't think you'll be able to see this. It's going up. You know, it goes it goes quite a bit up because I'm getting near the electric circuit of, of the light above my head. So the the area that the studies done by Electric Power Research Institute basically showed no damage to human tissue or cells in these low frequency magnetic fields. The only thing in their studies that they found were high tension power lines, not low tension power lines, not, I'm talking about the high tension, big aluminum frame, powerful wires might with caution have a connection between to Down syndrome and leukemia, um, mostly in children. But again, when they do a study like that, because the effects or harmful effects are not uniform, meaning one person or one child might get um, leukemia or be born with Down syndrome and another not means they can't prove it either way. But yet when they do studies away from high tension power lines, they'll see less of that in, in per capita. But they're very cautious about saying there, there's a proven connection but yet they know there's a connection, but they even they can't state it. So if if somebody is 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 concerned about the magnetic fields in their environment, the one you really want to be concerned about is in the red, because this can read microwaves, and because I can go into any town, I've gone into, you know, Boulder, Colorado, Santa Fe, New Mexico driving down the highway, anywhere in the red mode, I'm going to see very big activity. But because I live 20 minutes from my nearest town and there's there's nobody, there's there's nothing around me, it's all zeros, right, in, in the RF mode, right? So my single router in my house um, is not powerful enough in the middle of the house to really cause any significant, and again, it's measuring watts per meter squared, right? Did you see it? There's a few little jumps there that just happened. Now, if I get this near a single cell phone when it's being used, then, uh, Astaria, can you bring me my phone? I just, I just want to show something. My daughter has my phone. Okay, so... If I do this, you see how it just jumped up? You see that? Yeah. That's still very weak. And that's because, and and I'm, I'm not doing anything online with my phone right now. Let me just try something here. Hang on. Let's, um, let's go to Fox News here and see. See, it just went up to, it had a, as soon as I went to the internet, you have to be jumping around the internet. It's still incredibly weak. But if you go into a community and you turn this to the red, now this will see up to eight gigahertz, this meter. And, and that's pretty high, although most of, this, of the cell providers out there, and when you get to 4G and 5G, are way past eight gigahertz. So you might not see much, but that's because... They're all the way to 30 gigahertz now and higher. This meter can't see that high. So that doesn't mean 
that there's nothing going on. It just means that there may or may not be something beyond the scope of this meter. But then if I go to this meter here, which is way more expensive, this meter can see higher than 8 gigahertz. Much higher. But it's still what 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 concerns in the in the study on human um, health that was done by Electric Power Research Institute, microwaves are the most harmful, right? So micro technically means millionth, one over a million, a, a millionth of a meter wave, but actually uh, microwaves can be much longer wavelengths than even that than a millionth of a meter, but they just came up with the name microwaves. My, microwaves are much more dense radio waves because they're generated in a magnetron, which is a little metal box, and it, it produces very dense radio waves and sends them out really fast. And that's why on your meter in the RF mode, you'll see these, especially on smart meters, you'll see these really fast, really strong pulses. But this measures watts per meter squared in a very small dose very small it's it's this and when it's measuring in milligoss it only goes up to a hundred milligoss and that's nothing that's not going to hurt you remember nikola tesla worked around fields of of millions of high frequency volts going right through his body the real issue about whether magnetic fields can be harmful or not is more about the strength of the field and whether it's a harmony or a disharmony, right? And that's the purpose of, of using um, systems like mine to tune the nervous system, you know, two or three times a week at least. If you're working, if you're jaw, let's say you work in one of these office towers, go in an office tower with one of these and check magnetic first. If you get higher than six milligauss, you know, you're getting up there. And then you go to the RF mode and it's measuring watts per meter squared, right? I can see centimeters, um, watts per centimeter squared on my more expensive meter. And so there... There's where you're, you may see a decline in mental health studies that, that are go in tandem with humans being around very strong microwaves. So if I, even in my little town, which is 10,000 people, right? You know, I've, I've taken this to Sedona. I've taken it to um, Boulder, Colorado. And, and I've seen some pretty strange things. Like I've seen certain businesses that when I walk to the front door, the meter goes like crazy in, in, in measuring microwaves. And then if I go away from that business and go down the street, everything else seems pretty fine. And then I go to another business and I'll see the meter go way up. And I say, who's doing this? Why, why isn't it uniform? Why are certain businesses really, really high? Like I went to the Shambhal Meditation Center in Boulder and it was extremely high. And then I went down the street and everything's normal. And then I went into the health food store and it was really freaking high. So I was like, "Who is somebody targeting health food people with microwaves to make them messed up? Right. So the website for the meter is trifield.com. T-R-I field.com is where people get these. But again, this, this meter is so sensitive that in milligauss, it's only going to go to 100. And you're probably never going to, if your house was 10, in the middle of the house, it's probably not electrically grounded properly. And I have seen people who live in houses that are not electrically grounded properly get really messed up. Because it's constantly 6 to 10 milligauss. And it really should be somewhere around 2 two and a half and lower milligauss, right? That, again, it's not a strong field, but the, the brain is so weak and so sensitive that these tiny deviations, if they're consistent, can disrupt sleep patterns. And when you're not sleeping well, you, you can actually become 
disturbed and stressed out and and that's why again i i put people on my coil bed systems and i've watched consistently in fact i had a woman recently buy one for a friend just to use and he said i've never slept better in my life and i'm not giving it back to you <laughs> she couldn't get it back from him and she just loaned it to him as 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 like a trial and he said i, I can't believe how good i'm sleeping well because when you put a nice harmony in the nervous system, it it really smooths out the ripples, and the ripples are coming. Again, some people are so sensitive in their nervous system. The wiring in the walls, you can walk around with one of these and all your light sockets and your your switches for your lights, and you'll you'll see the activity um, when the lights on. And but again, if the house is properly grounded, you shouldn't see much. You shouldn't see if I turn on the blender, this will go crazy in magnetic mode and it'll go all the way to the end. And you'll say, Oh my god, that's dangerous. Well, it isn't really because, because you're only going to be in that magnetic field when you do the blender for as long as it takes to you know spin your smoothie or make some sauce. And same with a hair dryer. If I put this next to a hair dryer, it's gonna go way up uh, because there's a coil. In, in the hair dryer that's generating heat, right? And so it's kind of fun to walk around with one of these, but the real concern is more in the um, the range of the microwaves. Now, my coils, I can measure the field on these big ones, these big cube systems with a really sensitive meter, even 60 feet away which means it's 60 feet this way, this way, and this way. So I have a very effective healing radius, but I'm not even, you know, let's say at 10 feet away, I might only be at six milligauss. But there's a difference. It's a pulsed harmonic six milligauss. So it, it's not how strong the field is, whether it's disturbing to to your physiology and whether it's a harmony, right? So I can play chaotic music or I can play nice music to my nervous system. And when you understand that sound waves are, are not unlike magnetic waves in, in that you can't hear magnetic waves, but they're around us all the time. Like if you could put on a pair of glasses um, and um, my daughter has these really funny orange glasses, but I don't think that, I think they're in the car, but and you could see magnetic fields all of a sudden, right? And and the way to do that is if you can take this meter, and again, so all the all the coilings in in my in my systems, the magnetic field is ninety degrees to the coil, and it gets weaker and weaker and weaker by the distance. But I can still see it pulsing, you know, fifteen feet away on the other side using a very small amount of power. So what I'm saying is, because because customers have asked this, is that how do you know that's safe? Well, well, it, it's incredibly safe. In fact, it's nowhere near the levels that Nikola Tesla exposed himself to, and he lived to be 87. What, what we do know is that because it's pulsing, it, it's causing the, the, the magnetic material in your blood and also the charge in your nervous system to become massaged and stimulated, right? So again, isn't it, isn't, it, isn't it true that if you compare it to an MRI, for example, that the the cubes and the and the castles? Oh, well, the way, cubes way would way be deeper? immensely tiny compared to an MRI. Immensely right. tiny, because even a foot away, if I reach a hundred milligauss, again, a hundred milligauss is is there. There's a there, a milligauss means there's a thousand gauss, so 100 milligauss would be one tenth of a gauss, and then you need a th 10 thousand gauss to reach one tesla, right? And then the MRIs can go as high as six tesla, and they don't they don't seem to cause any harm to human beings, but I wouldn't want to live in six tesla, although Nikola Tesla lived in. And he developed superpowers. Nikola Tesla had a lot of powers. He had the ability to see the dead. I mean, his best friend was Mark Twain, the the, the great poet. And when 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 Twain died, 
Tesla had locked himself in his lab and, and somebody came knocking at the door and, and, and Tesla opened the door and he said, uh, you know, what is it? What is it? You know, don't, please don't disturb me. He said that your friend Mark Twain died a few days ago and we wanted to tell you. And he said, well, that's impossible. He was sitting in here with me last night. So so Tesla was seeing <laughs> Mark Twain after he died in his lab. So in, in, the, in these incredible harmonically tuned fields that he generated he was able to see in a higher dimension and communicate and sit there and have a conversation with mark twain and mark twain had one heck of a sense of humor and probably didn't even want to tell tesla that he was dead <laughs> so again i'm giving you these comparisons because i see a lot of people running around with their meter and and like and they see the meter jumping around they go oh my god that must be dangerous no, no, no. This meter is very sensitive to very small amounts of energy, really small. When, when you get, like, I've never seen a Tesla anywhere. I mean, a field strength called one Tesla, not anywhere. Because I have multiple meters here that can see more and more energy. This meter can't see one Tesla. It can't get anywhere near that. It's, it's a sensitive meter to see small, you know, small amounts of, of magnetic field and microwaves, right? So, but you you will see in RF mode, which includes microwaves, you will see a lot of activity anywhere, like in, in our towns and cities. It, it's quite disturbing how much, and those are the ones that concern me the most as far as disturbing sleep patterns, creating chaos in the human nervous system, and, and disrupting natural uh, brainwave rhythms it is more the microwaves. Because here's another thing. The higher the frequency, the more the, the transfer of energy, right? So, so in magnetic mode, so I can go to, let's just do this right now. I can go to trifield.com and tri trifield.com and i go to the tf2 meter and okay so frequency range in magnetic mode is 40 hertz to 100 kilohertz but that's actually wrong because i've tested the tf2 in magnetic mode and i can see a half a hertz so, but they're just demonstrating that it only goes up to in magnetic mode, a hundred thousand waves per second, and the sensitivity resolution is zero point one milligauss, and the accuracy is plus or minus four percent at fifty and sixty hertz, which is the frequency of the of the electricity. Now, in electric mode, it's the same. Um, it, it, it actually goes to 0 0.5 hertz. I, I've tested it. So they're just being really conservative here. But in, in RF microwave mode, its sensitivity actually is 20 million hertz to 6 gigahertz. Not 8 gigahertz. I was wrong. It's not 8. It can see up to 6. Now, there's lots of cell companies that that are sending data way below 6 gigahertz. But now if I go to the frequency of cell providers microwaves I actually had this years ago um broadly speaking microwaves op um, operate in the range of 300 million hertz to 300 billion hertz right but do but but that doesn't mean do that we have the cell provider that you use like t-mobile 600 megahertz is cell phone frequency bands by provider here we go so we go to uh why do cellular carriers have multiple frequencies because they buy they buy um, bandwidth right so now we go to the um uh, fourth generation, 4G. I'm just trying to see the numbers. Here we go. Carriers, AT&T, 850 megahertz band to 3.4 gigs. So so that meter can pick up all that. 
right? That's AT and T. Verizon, eight hundred and fifty megahertz to um, one point nine gigs. Um, T Mobile, all the way up to thirty nine gigahertz. So that's past the meter, right? The T Mobile will go. They do use the lower bands as well. T Mobile. Um, here, I can put this in the chat so some of you can look at this. Um, US Cellular goes all the way up to 39 gigahertz. Um, Cricket Wireless goes all the way up to 39. Boost Mobile, 2.5 gigahertz, well within the range of that meter. So, what this shows you is um, 3G bands are are well within the range of that meter, all of them, by every carrier. Um, the 5G is going upwards to 20 and 30 gigs. So this meter won't see it. Won't see it. And the thing about meters is they get more expensive if you want to see way up there. They really get expensive. And there's something about the higher bands I mean, you can spend $10,000 on a good meter if you want to know the exact frequencies that are around you. I mean, they've got these even pocket-sized ones that can see way up there, but they're they're very very pricey, right? So you won't see you won't see 5G with this. I mean, you, I mean again, can you post the link, David, and I'll share no, no, it. No, I think that shows the frequency bands of the providers. I was just looking at that. Oh, I deleted it. But maybe maybe I cut and pasted it. Let's see what I have in my browser here. Yeah, frequencies by provider. I did I did copy it. It's right there. Oh, perfect. Well, I can share it. So you have to you have to scroll down there. So again, the higher the frequency to transfer energy to the human nervous system in your cells, the higher the frequency, the higher the heat. And therefore, the more, I mean, I've seen studies that were done over a decade ago that showed um, mute, uh, damage to male sperm from using a laptop on a person's lap. And, and that wasn't very high frequency because that was over 10 years ago, those studies. Right, so you don't you don't put a laptop on your lap because your computer it, it's not off. I mean, the magnetic part of your computer is the circuitry. So all the resistors, there's all these little resistors inside of your computer circuitry. They will radiate in the magnetic field range, but they 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 won't radiate much more than that distance, right? So when you get a system like this and it can radiate sixty feet. But very harmonic, beautiful frequencies to, to that are therapeutic to the nervous system. That's a totally different thing. But and again, we're this isn't microwaves. There's no microwaves coming off this. There's a little bit of RF coming off of this, but they're they're low frequency RF. Um, I'm just looking at some of the comments here. Um, so the the thing to understand is there's something better than any of the meters out there and that's your nervous system so when you so here's a question are there digital and analog waves well no a wave is a wave is a wave the the, the right. means to measure them is is digital versus i mean you need an oscilloscope to really look at but oscilloscopes only see waves in two dimensions on a flat screen they don't really see them all the x y and z but but that <coughs> this meter here can actually measure the field strength in the x y and the z all right and th this meter again each meter has a different uh, a different sensitivity range but again the meters they can see way up into the high gigahertz like that can see 30 gig 30 gigahertz is way beyond the what's called the the microwave um window or, or the the microwave window i think is 1.420 gigs so that, that's way lower than we're running our 
our internet set, right? So that's like the, you know, the wow signal that was discovered in the 70s came just above what's called the hydrogen window where where an extraterrestrial civilization might broadcast a signal to Earth, which is kind of funny to me <coughs> because our cell companies are way higher than that, right? They're, they're getting into the range of the cosmic microwave background radiation in the universe. Remember, there's natural cosmic microwave background radiation but the amplitude is very low so the frequencies get really really high and when frequencies get really really high the amplitude drops and there's a certain point if we ever get to true trillion waves per second which is you know the light that comes off the sun is somewhere it, it's you know you have each the frequency of each one of your nine primary colors are in the the middle of the trillion hertz band and and those those those, those are, are very 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 high frequency and when we get up into those bands we're going to start seeing all sorts of things we can't explain right there's a statement here what about our neighbors have microwaves and you don't i don't really know what that means well, again, when, when you are not using your cell phone, there's nothing happening with it. It's only when you make a call or if you're using the internet, right? So if when you turn on your, you know, your search to find um, signals for internet, you can see all your neighbors, which means you're around a lot of fields, right? So if, if you live in an apartment building, or a building that has a lot of internet usage, those signals are firing all over the place. And if you could see them with these magic glasses I'm talking about, they go right through your head, your chest. They're going all over the place. Because if somebody has a device over here and over here and over here, and you're talking about wavelengths this big, they're just going right through you, right? So they're... There's no doubt you can't have a wave go through you without affecting you. You just can't. And remember, we went over this last time. Is 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 make electromagnetic waves do three things? Some of them go through, some of them bounce off, which gives you a picture. So you could actually this was done at MIT years ago. MIT developed a camera that using cell phone microwaves, they could see through the walls of your house and see what you were doing better than an x-ray better than an x-ray they actually have cameras the military they can see right through buildings and see what everybody's doing because there's so many microwaves bouncing around they can generate a picture and this was proven this was done you know there's an article on on mit's website i found that, that demonstrates this so because photons Microwave photons are just that. They're photons. They can give you a picture. And so some of them go through the wall. Some of them bounce off the wall. And some of them transfer their energy to the atom atomics of, of what the wall is made out of. And if your body is that wall, some of the microwaves are transferring energy to your system. And therefore, they can cause heating. They can cause disturbance. And they can disrupt natural, you know, uh, sleep and, and, and rhythm. So why do we want to have, you know, a nice coil in our house to, to run some really nice harmonics to, to tune and harmonize the energy field of the space that we're living in? You don't have to have these things running all the time. You know, you can run them three times a week. And all the electrons in the house will be still spinning from the benefits if I run this. I've tested this and even my smaller systems. And it seems that the field is improved for about three days just from running this for about an hour. And then three days later, I'll run it again, run it again. And I'll keep, the, I've, I've checked dreams and dreams, of course, are related to our creativity and you know, the quality of my dreams drop dramatically when I don't run harmonic frequencies in the house versus when I do. And I've done double blind studies on this and I've done them for years and years and years and years and years. And then it's um, it, it's it's so clear to me 
that when you run harmonic systems, that the creative there's creative benefits. See, what I'm saying is don't think of PMF as a cure for cancer. Legally, you can't do that. And if anybody is telling you that, it's actually against the law. It's fraud and medical malpractice. But you, a person who bought one of these systems can tell you, hey, I had cancer and I used this, and in seven months my can cancer went away. They legally can say that, but they can't medically prove it. They can only say, I used this system, my cancer went away, but they can't medically prove it, but they can say, yeah, I used the system and this is what happened. Like, I had a guy, his dog had this huge tumor on his ear and he didn't, he didn't want to get the surgery. So he got one of my wands. He ran the sound of the sun magnetically as NASA recorded the sound and, and the freaking tumor just shrunk, 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 shrunk. And then it was gone in three months. That's incredible. I mean, that should get the attention of the whole medical community, but the medical community doesn't care. So can I say that there was a my, there was a woman with breast cancer that had a similar experience too, and within three months right. her see, but that, that I can't too. prove unless you do fully funded medical studies. But but there are are studies that I've read that are fully funded medical studies that prove that these pulsed frequencies um, are are causing a huge improvement in the person's condition. But yet, that doesn't mean all the doctors in the world know about it and decide to get one. It just means that somebody did a study that says that there seems to be a benefit to this, but but we're not going to tell anybody about it. I don't know why does everybody doesn't freak out and say we should get one of these. But so the the knowing how things work, knowing that all the trace minerals in your blood are all magnetic, as I said in the beginning tonight. They're either ferromagnetic, paramagnetic, or diamagnetic, or antiferromagnetic, which means that when, when you have a coil turned on and you're near it, um, you everything starts moving in there. Circulation starts improving. And if you do it regularly, the, the benefits become very, very obvious, even though you can't really legally state anything. So... What are the other benefits to pulsed electromagnetic fields? Well, sleep is one. We see a huge amount of data that people report better sleep, even though you can't scientifically prove that either. It's amazing the world we live in because you you can't you can't see you, you can't. I've had people tell me stories that are so unbelievable, and I say I can't print that. I won't print that. Because I don't know if the next person who does this is going to get the same results you did. And in fact, in the same way, when EPRI did studies, Electric Power Research Institute, on, on leukemia with you know children and Down syndrome li living in near um, high-tension power lines, not all the kids in the neighborhood got Down syndrome and leukemia. So therefore, you can't prove scientifically that high-tension power lines cause this, but yet when you go into environments where there's no high tension power lines, you don't see all this leukemia, right? So is there a connection? That's how science works. They won't admit that there is. And it was the same thing after, you know, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, when nuclear bombs were dropped on Japan in those two cities in 1945, some people got cancer and some people didn't. So, what's the difference? Why isn't it uniform? Why doesn't everybody die of cancer? Because some people don't. They can't explain it. There are theories, like one of the theories in, in Fukushima and, and Nagasaki was that the people who ate the white rice got cancer and died, and the people who ate the brown rice didn't. I, I actually read a study like that. And what's the difference? Well, the brown rice has more magnesium. And if you take, you know, I tell everybody, if when you use my systems, take electrolytes, take some salt, magnesium, potassium, a little bit of lithium, which you can get in the health food store. And lithium is in pistachio nuts and lemons. So you get all your electrolytes in your body because electrolytes do just that. They, they, when they're stimulated, because of piezoelectricity, which is when you pulse an electrolyte crystal, it releases energy, right? 
so that it's going to give your system more energy um, if you have electrolytes in your system when you do pulsed magnetic frequency sessions. So I tell everybody to do that. Yeah, we, we, we ship all over the world, Mexico, everywhere. If you go on my site to davidsreedy.co, in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see it right. Oh, I'm trying to move my hand right there. Um, That's on both sides. <laughs> you can you can go to the beds, the wands, the coils, and, and you know, I mean, it, the price again. These systems are designed to last you a lifetime, so you can start and get an entry wand for two thousand or a bed for two thousand dollars, and then you can build up from there. But there, the, the coils don't break unless you break them. If you drop them and smash them with a hammer, they they won't last you. But um, this will last you over a hundred years. And the amplifier that powers it, which is you buy separately, well, that might break, but the, the, the coil systems won't break. They'll last you a hundred years. So it's, it's a very worthwhile investment. The, my interest in it is more, I'm interested in health benefits, but that's where you get into a lot of trouble with the law. But I actually, and more interested in the 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 benefits of, of consciousness, tapping into the creative force, having higher states of vision, more beautiful dreams, better sleep, and 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 the overall sense of of well being and bliss is is what interests me more because I don't have a health condition. Other than the fact that I was born with this giant growth in my liver called a hemangioma, it's about as big as my fist. It's right down here. And I've had it since I was a kid, and the doctors have thought of removing it. It does stress out my liver from time to time, but I've lived with this thing since I was a kid, and it, it's not cancer. And it, other than, other than being born with um, two or three hemangiomas in my liver, I'm fine. And so I don't, I don't use my systems for to combat any type of illness. I, I use them because I'm really amazed at what it does to consciousness. Like, I mean, the consciousness aspect is very advanced on these. It's a talk I've never really given properly before, but that's what interests me the most. So people who buy my systems buy them for health reasons because they, they understand how it, it, it may benefit them that way and then there's a whole bunch of people who get them for consciousness and believe it or not and this might shock you but i've had women who cannot get pregnant for the life of them and they buy one of my systems and they're pregnant right away and and they're carrying a baby and they can't even believe it i wish i could get jennifer aniston to get one of these because um she wants to get pregnant and she can't and another Another um, comment I get from many customers is they buy my bed systems because it improves the enjoyment of sex because when they're transmitting frequencies under the bed and making love, they have higher quality sensations when they're making love to, in the presence of frequencies. And I noticed when my wife and I conceived our two daughters this tremendously and that my wife could tell me, because when you're in the lovemaking state, your nervous system is heightened, right? And you're much more sensitive in that state. She could tell me, although you can't hear anything, which frequency that she liked to make love to more than another one. She liked the infinities. She just loved them. And our children, not only during the, the nine months in the womb were they being bathed in these frequencies after they were born th th their range of expression even tonally like my my youngest daughter starry would she didn't talk for the longest time she made all these little sounds that were like birds like really high-pitched sounds she was like a little musical instrument and then one day when she started talking she knew what everything was and all of a sudden she's just she understands everything. It's the most incredible thing I've ever seen. And my daughter, Alira, very similarly was, was you know, exposed to frequencies in the womb. And, and in the womb, in that nine-month period, 
the nervous system is so intelligent it's it's almost like the matrix it's like they're super running frequencies during the nine months of the moon so that when they're born they're going to have this whole greater expanded uh, range of awareness over a child that's just hearing ambient noises and maybe some music and things like that so it's i think something really magical happened to my two daughters when when they were when they were you know uh, forming in the womb you know and being exposed to the frequencies so somebody said something about um black strap yeah molasses is high in calcium calcium is another electrolyte it's high in iron maple syrup has incredible minerals in it and electrolytes as well yeah shawuchi is great stuff i used to take that all the time i used to get it in los angeles at the tea garden um and there was this ron tea garden place that on melrose you still love the shawuchi that's really good for the liver um i'm just reading some of the cons yeah molasses is so incredibly good for you i used to have the best day skiing when i had molasses and pancakes in the morning i had energy all day and and to yeah to reduce pineal calcification absolutely you know when you lay on my bed system and you have a coil right behind your head i mean it, it, it it's absolutely the pulses will start to loosen the, the pineal and you'll start to experience luminous luminosity in the head region in the inner eye region like you've never experienced before but it takes time i mean don't think you're going to do one session or three sessions and you're going to get there you've got to do this religiously like and again if you own a system it's gonna if you take care of it it will last you forever all right everybody i've got to get back to my kids thank you everyone for being here and again you can just go to my youtube channel where these videos are stored and share them with your friends um, i could maybe take one more, one more question and um if anybody's got another question their um, last one is um does it work only in short distances no no i can i can I mean, your effective healing radius on the bigger coil systems is is 30 feet diameter. That's huge. That, that, this will vibrate a whole healing center, you know. And, and, a, a, and, a cube will, and a cube will do distance healing. Well, a cube will do distance healing. And the reason why I can show you how that works is there's a coil in your microphone. And one coil can transfer frequencies to another and send them out through the Internet. And then in addition, you can slide a person's photograph in here. And because all the photons coming between the sun and the earth know who everybody is, and each one of us are different, the that person's holographic image will receive the frequencies. And, and there's there's a lot of research that has been done to support that. Uh, there's a my, question asking, can my you best meditation approaches. Again, I, I've got an inner circle you can join and take the, the three-year course I've done in med, I teach in meditation. Which actually, which is, if you join, which actually includes the uh, first year of the quantum regenesis course that David offers. Right. If yeah. you, Once if you, you sign up for a year. Understand the breath and then doing the frequencies and then the, the, the sitting in the silence, those three phases done repeatedly with harmonic frequencies will take you into the deepest states of meditation ever every day for six years now and i've been meditating every day for 45 years the amount of bliss i experience is so astounding it, 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 it's hard to believe that our nervous system can perceive that much supernatural ecstasy it, it's unbelievable how much there is and I go into this state very quickly now. It can only sometimes it only takes one minute, and I'm there. And I, it's better than any drug on earth. It's better than anything on earth. And then I come out of it, and I might do it a second time in the day. But I attribute this success to. Um, I mean, I've been meditating for many, many years, but it's really the breath, working with the tones and the frequencies, and the light. Which again, the original Lord's Prayer in Aramaic. Was O thou from whom the breath of life comes, who fills all realms with sound, light, and vibration. 
And so it's the breath, the sound, and the light, the breath, the frequency, and the light. So if you if you just sit in meditation and approach it traditionally, it, it, I've done every technique there is. And eventually you realize that the Lord's Prayer, the way Jesus originally said it in his language in Aramaic, is the way. That is the real way to do it. But the frequency part and the toning part, you can't just tone sounds at any pitch you want. It would be like trying to tune a guitar, and you're the guitar, but you're not tuning the guitar. You're just making noise. So you, you can't just make sounds that are at the wrong frequency. You have to have them at the right frequencies. But I should give a whole talk really just on that and maybe give some examples. But I've got to run. Um, my daughter's climbing under the table here right here. So um, uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you very much. Thanks, David. Bye. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> there she is. <laughs> There's the top of her head.